So I got a new toy over Christmas I get to mess around with. Um, hoping we can use this down at the chicken barn since, or the chicken coop since we don't have any power down there yet. It'd also be pretty cool to have uh, when we go camping and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. This is a portable power station, 600 watt outdoor power station. Um, 595 watt hours. So it'll be interesting to see how much and how long we can actually power stuff with this. It's just solar charging, so outdoor travel companion. Like a plug-in power adapter there to charge it. It's like a cigarette lighter, cigarette lighter charger there. It's almost 12 volts. Yeah. Guess that probably weighs about. Oh, not very heavy. Nothing else in the box. <laughs> As you can tell, I like orange. It's kind of rubbery feeling. It's kind of like a rubber, rubber deal and hard plastic. So I wonder if it already comes with a charge. Yep, so we're eighty percent charged. AC plug in there, 12 volt, 10 amp. I'm not really sure. I guess that's where you would plug in your power of that. Not a touch screen. So 99 hours of power if we're doing zero watts. So it looks like we can charge some things in that. There's a, a 3.0 USB. Oh, right, there's where your power input would be at. Oh! Light. Oh, brighter. Oh, flashing. Oh, that was really bright. <laughs> I can't see now. So this is basically your inverter, charge controller, and everything all in one. So I would guess that you could plug in your solar panels into one of these for charging. I'll have to read the directions and find out. It'd be pretty cool if we can get a couple plugs like this down at the um, that's your ground wire, so you turn your uh, ground wire up or down and stick it in there and then you don't have to worry about having a ground on this system. So pretty cool. I'm hoping we can set this up down there at the chicken coop and we'll have a light and I'll get an outlet for a couple more lights down there and maybe even a little space heater if we need it. Well I wanted to start playing with this right away but it's time I'm supposed to charge it to 100% first. So I'll let that sit there and charge all the way. I did find out though that this is for your solar panel. So the little cigarette lighter hooks up directly into the unit and then um, this will hook up to your solar panels on this side. It hooks onto a 100 watt solar panel, which I don't have, so I don't really have a good way to test that. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. So in the instructions here, it gives a couple uh, basic hours that it would charge something. This looks like for a mini fridge, you do 10 hours, for a fan, 17 hours. Uh, I'm trying to think of someone here that I'd be using, maybe a laptop, I guess, eight hours. I guess if you're going on a trip or something, there's some of the base construction. So there's where it talks about using the solar panel to charge it. Um, you can also use this to charge your battery on your car. There's a couple other options on there that I need to figure out. Well, this guy has been charging for two hours, two full hours, and we're only up to 99%. So I've gone up basically uh, from, well, 20% in two hours so it's definitely a slow charger that's for sure all right so i've come to the realization that this is never going to reach 100 percent so 99 is the best we can get out of it it's been literally hooked up to um, 120 volts for four hours now i think okay i noticed that i was going to use this um, my christmas present here down at the chicken coop but um figured i'd give it a shot in this uh, little remodel we're working on. Um, so the floor here is, is soft. It's just the sawdust stuff and it's falling apart. Um, a couple years ago we replaced some of the other flooring and now we're back to do this this section which is getting pretty rough. So I'm going to see if this can handle a random skill saw. So it says that it's got 600 watts out of the outlet. 
This is a 13 amp um, by 120 volts. So that's roughly around 1500 watts. So the highest 1500 watts that's most likely when it first starts up is that initial surge. I don't know what the surge is on here. I guess we're gonna find out here pretty soon if it will take that or if it will kill it. So we should see. If it does overpower it, I should just get a warning that it's been overpowered and doesn't want to work anymore. Turn it on here. So we're at that 99%, because like I said the other day, it wouldn't get up all the way to 100. And I think I need to hit that. Nope, didn't work. Nothing. So it tries, but it kills it right away. So it does that, I get an error message. And that would appear it just shut down all together. <laughs> I broke it. <laughs> well. Well, I guess that was into that. So I got an error message. Oh, now it's turning back on. So it must have had a little period where it had to wait a little bit because it was trying to figure out what the heck I just did to it. It looks like we're back up and running now. So yeah, will not run the skill saw. There you go. So I'll set that aside. Luckily I do have power in here. So I can go ahead and just plug on in and get to cutting this out. Alright, skill saw did not work, so we're going to try to drill now. So this is 5.5 amps times my 120 volts, gives me over that 600. Let's see if I error out again. Well, I did turn on. There we go. The drill's tapping out at about uh, 280 watts. Let's see if I do it real fast. So if I crank it really quickly, it's gonna air out on me. And the reason why is that your, your starting amps uh, is always gonna be higher. So just to get the motor spinning, is gonna be harder to get going. So if I just zip it real quick, it'll kill it. If I start slowly, So my running watts is 280, my starting watts is over that, that 600. So if I back these out to get the drill started here. So it works decently with a drill anyways, as long as you don't zip it down really quickly. Here, of course, on a crawl space, and uh, probably add some insulation where it's falling down a couple areas, clean up the edges, and then uh, get it put back down, and I'll be ready for carpet. So, if you notice the carpet that's right over there, that's the carpet that was actually in our uh, living room in our off grid build that we're doing. 
I'm gonna repurpose that, put it down here in this living room. Thinking about how I could use this power station, I came up with a really cool idea to try and film some barn owls that we have. You may have seen in a couple of the shorts I put out of these two barn owls that moved in. I have an old security camera system that I want to rig up down there and I hope we'll get some really cool shots of these owls. They're just beautiful. Okay, I got the ladder and the uh, little power station back behind the barn. I can look up through the back window and I can uh, see one of the owls there. They're just beautiful. Barn owls are white, um, perfectly round face, they're just gorgeous. So I'm really hoping that these are gonna nest. Um, they typically nest and um, or breed and everything in late winter. So we should be getting to that point here pretty soon. I'm probably gonna have to build a nesting box up there. I don't quite know how they're going to nest because they're just sitting on the uh, ridge beam right now. Um, but it's a big area, so if I build a nesting box in there, I'm sure they'll nest because we've got two of them. But it's pretty cool. I'm really hoping this will work out great. Uh, this power station idea was kind of just what I was looking for. I, was, I looked around at different options for uh, nesting cams and things like that. And most of them are gonna require some kind of power or more, um, um, more infrastructure to get this done. But using this power station, it is completely um, wireless. I can set it up there, hook my system up and just leave it and I can come back the next day and uh, view the monitor and download uh, videos and things like that. So um, I'm probably going to put the equipment and everything in the lower level down here. And then up top right of that door is the loft and that's where the owls are. So a lot of times they'll come out this gable end or they'll fly out a window in, in the back. Um, so if I put the equipment down below, I should be able to sneak in there and then uh, view it without interrupting them because during the daytime of course we're up there sleeping so i'm going to have to bug them now and they're, i'm sure they're going to fly out and that'll give me a chance to get in there get my camera set and get everything run and then hopefully tomorrow we'll have some really good footage of some owls So the two owls for the most part sit on that beam up there and that's the uh, that's how they slid the hay in. So you see right there that mechanism uh, has different ropes and pulleys on. Of course ropes are gone but there's a different pulley system on there and that would slide back and forth across this beam. It would go out the uh, loft door right there uh, which would hang down and then from below they could hoist up um, hay. So you bring the hay up through the doors along this beam. They could set it down anywhere inside this barn. The hay that's in here has probably been here for a very, very long time. We really need to get up here and clean this out, but I um, just haven't had a chance to yet try and get the house done and things like that. But uh, we've also had vultures in here. Uh, the first time we came out here to the property, we saw these old barns, and old barns are just cool. I mean, the craftsmanship and how I did all this is just awesome. Uh, for example, the way they nailed the beams together. This is just a wood spike, and they literally just drilled a hole and knocked these wood spikes through to hold everything together. Pretty awesome. See, that one fell out, so it's coming down. So the barn needs a little bit of work, but uh, definitely a handmade old barn, good century old barn. Just gotta watch where I'm stepping because there are some soft spots that I don't want to fall through. So our goal out here is to really get this fixed up and um, uh, have this usable at some point. Down below are a bunch of stalls. We want to be able to um, kid out our goats, things like that down there. Use as a breeding area. So you can see that beam still has the bark on it. So that's pretty cool. I love old barns, they're just really cool to go through. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get my camera set up. I think I'm gonna put one in that upper window there behind me, and then I'll try and get one somewhere way up there in the top so I can get a good view of them. They like to come in and out of that hole right there. That's one of the ways they get in and out. They also fly out that window behind me. So if I can get a camera somewhere up there, I probably get some really good shots of them. I've seen them several times, both of them kind of nestled together 
right up there in that corner. And then I'll have the power station, the, the uh, network cables I had to run the cameras. They're POE, which stands for Power Over Ethernet. So I can have the uh, camera system and that power station and everything down in the lower level. And all I have to have is a network wire running up here, and then that'll power the cameras and everything. Um, so I'll have that set up downstairs, run my wires up, have 100 foot wires, which is more than enough. Weave that up through uh, the rafters and everything to where I mount the cameras. And they should be pretty cool. I'm really, really looking forward to this. In here letting the chickens out before I can work on the camera system. We've got ourselves a broody hen. Yeah, you're kind of angry at me, aren't you? It's like, don't disturb me. Got quite a few eggs. Got two in there, three in there, one in there. Ooh, four in that one. Those white ones, those are fake eggs. Which you could probably take out now. Got one in there, one there. It's quite a few eggs. been selling these at the farmer's market and we got a guy that buys from us consistently all the time there's also a bakery that started buying from us they bought eight dozen eggs just yesterday you gonna let me look under you old lady huh are you probably not just leave you alone <laughs> Hey, I'm in the uh, upper part of the barn. I've got this set up and ready to turn it on. I did have to use a splitter um, because the way the setup is, these, these both have grounding prongs on them and I can't fit two grounding prongs in the same uh, slot that they have. This is not grounded, so it just has a void that that, that uh, grounding uh, prong goes into. Anyways, this tells you how old my equipment is. This is a gateway uh, monitor. <laughs> we probably had since my wife and I first got together back in 2000. And the camera system's a little bit newer, but this is the main the main puppy right here. So we're gonna see how well this works. Let's go ahead and turn it on. It's got 99% power, because I used it to do a uh, that job cutting out the floor. I didn't use it very much. I had it fully charged then. So it's got a little button here Turn the AC power on. Alright, there we go. Okay, several hours later, we're back getting this going. I don't know what the deal was. The cameras weren't working quite right, and um, then the SD card on my uh, the camera I'm filming this with said it had an error so anyways now i hope we're back up and good to going but uh power wise this has been sitting here for the last couple hours it's still at 98 percent says we have 9.8 hours of power i think that's what that means and our output is 46 watts so when i turn the monitor off that'll definitely help that i'm still going to move all this down to the lower level as well but here's the different camera views i got so i hope i can get a one of the owls flying in or out in this angle um, this one's facing to the outside, and I'll move that wire out of the way. Hope I can get one flying into the barn. And then this one is um, uh, where they typically nest at, it's right up in this area. So hopefully we'll get some good shots of them here. I'm going to get this set up downstairs. And again, this wouldn't be possible if I didn't have this little power station thing, because I have no power down here in the barn. So of course tomorrow I'm going to have to come through and open the box up so I can get to the USB drive so I can take the film off. But 
that is good enough for now. My goal is to get in here and be able to do this without disturbing the owls. So maybe if I'm quiet enough, I can get in here and do that. Okay, so it's the next morning. I'm gonna go check and see if our owl cam got anything. We got to uh, let the chickens out, do the typical morning chore and stuff. And then I plan to take the uh, power station and the uh, DVR or NVR. NVR? Anyways, take the recorder back to the house and um, see what we got. Okay, I'm just outside the barn. I'm gonna sneak around here as quiet as I can. I'm not even gonna look up there. I'm just gonna grab the camera and get out of there. I did see when I took this out that the battery did die last night, which is expected. But all we should have to do is plug it in and we'll see what we got here. Nope, don't think we got anything. There's an owl. Yeah, I got him a little bit. He didn't come into the barn. I don't know if the light scared him off. Oh, there he goes. So they were there. I don't know if they're in there now, but we didn't get anything. They didn't fly inside. I don't know if it's because the light's scaring them off. It's infrared light. I don't know, I gotta look and see if owls can see infrared light or not. Well, unfortunately we didn't get, uh, we got two shots of an owl flying around, but it didn't go into the barn. It was just outside. And then it seemed like the uh, system shut off about seven, eight o'clock, somewhere around there. So, although I wish it would have lasted a little longer, um, you know, there's proof of concept that I can do something like this with this little power station here. So they do have higher wattage. Again, this is a 600 watt. Uh, they do have an 1100 and then an 1800 watt. If it would have had something bigger, I'm sure the system would have lasted a lot longer. So I'll get this plugged in, get it charged back up again. And then uh, it's a pretty cool thing. I get to see what else I get to use it for. So it'll be kind of handy, especially if I'm on like a camping trip or something like that. We could plug this in and uh, run a fan. Anyone who's camped in the summertime knows that it gets pretty hot inside a tent. Uh, but they'll use it for something along those lines. Um, or if we're in the camper and, and uh, some of the campsites we go to, you, know, you can't use a generator after a certain time period. So we could use this to, um, you know, watch a show or run a router or, um, you know, all sorts of good things. So definitely handy to have. Um, kind of something. This one's nice and small. It'd be kind of good to fit in your car. As a little backup, you know, in case you get stranded or something in the winter time, you know, you can use the um, feature there for if you're stuck. Actually, I'm interested in the light works because I kind of wonder if it just turned off. Okay, so something clearly went wrong because this is still showing 93%. And it was 99 when I left in there, so this should have lasted all night long. So um, I wish it had a like an error guide or something, which would tell me why it errored out. Because this should have lasted a lot longer than that now that I'm looking at it. If I'm at 93%. Huh. Yeah, I'll have to figure out what happened there and why it just shut off. I mean, maybe it timed out because it wasn't sensing there was enough power. Not really sure. But, I mean, it still worked. I think if I get the solar panels, I'll be able to set up something even better where it can sit out there and stay uh, stay running for a while. We'll have to uh, read the manual and see if it see if it times out after a certain certain time period. 
and then get it fixed and set back up. Maybe the next video I can do is if I can get this uh, fine tuned and um, maybe get the solar panel kit and then uh, have it automatically charge in the daytime because if it only went, let's see, it was out there for about two hours before it shut off and it only used 8%, actually less than that, about 6% uh, of battery power. That definitely should last it all night long. Anyways, cool little gizmo. Um, definitely something to have handy around the house. So I'm glad I got it and I'm sure I'll be using it for all sorts of fun things in the future. The next day I went down to the barn and hooked the system back up. Still didn't quite get the shots I wanted, but these are a couple of the ones I did get. Thank you.